Algebra 2, 7.1c, kth roots and odd and even roots. Now it's really important that you have watched the previous videos, 7.1a and 7.1b. I don't want you to get confused and we're continuing and building on from what we learned in the previous videos. You can click on this video's description to go to those links. So we learned in the previous videos that we have an index up here in the upper left. We've got our radical symbol, that's our radicand. We have a little k here now, that's the kth root. And when an index is an unknown, we can call it the kth root. Just like we could get an n and say to the nth degree or to the nth power, that's the kth root. And the kth root of this 32, if the root is a 2, then the kth root here would be a 4 because 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 equals 32. We'd have 4 of them, so we'd put a little 4 up there. See? If the kth root of a equals c, then we say c to the k power, see, is going to equal the a. c is the kth root of a. Here we have the ninth root of a equals c. Then c to the ninth power is equal to a. c is the ninth root of a. And roots can be odd numbers or even numbers. And we discussed that in the last video. So this could be an odd or even number. This is an odd one. Nine is an odd number, isn't it? and 4 would be an even. When we have a negative 3 times a negative 3, it's going to make a positive 9. That's an even amount of negative 3's. There's two of them. When we have an odd amount of negative 3's, now we have three of them, it's going to make a negative 27. When we have four of them, it's going to bring us back to a positive 81. So every time we have an even, we have a positive, and every time we have an odd amount of them, we have a negative answer. See that? So when we have negative numbers like this, even ones make a positive answer and odd amounts of them make negatives. Whenever we multiply a negative number an odd amount of times to itself, we get a negative product. Whenever we multiply a negative number an even amount of times to itself, we get a positive product. When the kth root is even, when this is even, and we have a positive radicand. There's two possible roots, a positive or a negative. This could be y times y equals x, or it could be negative y times negative y equals x. And this would be four of them, y times y times y times y equals x, or negative y times negative y times negative y times negative y equals x. Now because of this, we may find it necessary to use absolute value for our answers with even kth roots. So not odd ones, only even ones, we may have to use absolute value, okay? So only the even ones. Negative radicands, okay, if this is a negative, they don't have real number kth roots when this is even, all right? It's only when it's even, all right? We'll talk about that a little bit more. So for the odd kth roots, absolute values aren't necessary. And if we've got the fifth root of a negative 32, it's going to equal a 2. Because if we multiply it to itself five times, we're going to have that negative 32. Same with if the negative sign is on the outside of the radical symbol, we're still going to have a negative 2. The negative fifth root of 32 is a negative 2. See? It's almost like there's an invisible 1 there that we can distribute, okay? I'm going to talk about that more later on in this chapter. If we have the seventh root of x to the seventh, it's going to just be x. Because that's to the seventh and that's to the seventh, we can remove this radical sign and just have x. Okay. For this one, because the ninth root of x minus one to the ninth power, because they both have the ninth there, it's just going to equal x minus one. We can just remove the radical symbol and the exponents and that root there because this would be x minus 1 times x minus 1, right? Nine times in a long row, okay? For this one, it's just going to equal a negative 2x because negative 2 multiplied by itself five times, see, is going to be that negative 32 and the, the x to the fifth is going to be just the x, see? And because this is an odd kth root, it's a 
5, we don't need the absolute value sign for that x. The seventh root of 3x plus 2 to the 7th is 3x plus 2. And the fifth root of negative 1 32nd is negative half. So an odd amount of negatives is going to give us a negative, and an even amount of negatives is going to give us a positive. So if you notice here, this has got a negative, so the answer had a negative. See that? This has got a negative, so the answer had a negative. See that? Now for the even kth roots, if we've got a little 4 out here, that means we need to multiply something to itself 4 times to get that 16. So 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 equals that positive 16. So our answer is a positive 2. And if we have the negative sign on the outside of the radical sign, we've got a negative fourth root of 16. We get a negative 2. But when that negative sign is on the inside for this one, there's no real number root. And we're going to talk about this in video 7.7 .7 when we talk about imaginary numbers. There is no number that we can multiply to itself four times that we're going to get a negative 16. See? Negative 2 won't work and a positive 2 won't work. All right, so we're going to discuss this later on. We have the fourth root of 5a to the fourth power. This would be 5a times 5a times 5a times 5a, wouldn't it? Our answer would be 5 with the a in the absolute value bar is because we don't know what a represents, do we? Does the variable represent a positive or negative amount? We don't know. So let's stick it in some absolute value bars to be safe. Now look at this one. We know that if we multiply 3 times 3 times 3 times 3, that's going to give us the 81. And this x to the fourth, we don't know if it's a positive or negative value that represents, that this x is representing. So we're going to put it in the absolute value bars, okay? You notice all the variables are going in the absolute value signs? Okay, now we have the sixth root of seven, y plus 7 to the 6. This whole thing, y plus 7, is going to go in the absolute value bars, see? For this one, the fourth root of 16 times x minus 2 to the fourth, well, the fourth root of 16 is a 2, see? And the x minus 2 to the fourth power means x minus 2 times x minus 2 times x minus 2 times x minus 2, doesn't it? So because of that root, we can just put it in absolute value bars as x minus 2. For this one, we can just remove that exponent and that sixth root here and the radical sign and just put it in absolute value as x. For this one, it would be a negative 4. The negative fourth root of 256 would be a negative 4. Negative 4 times negative 4 times negative 4 times negative 4, you know, 4 times, would equal that positive 256. And for the 8th root of y to the 8th would just be the y in the absolute value bars because we don't know if y is positive or negative, do we? So I have a theorem for you. For any real number a, the following statements are true. The kth root of a to the kth power, when k is even, it's going to, the a is going to be in absolute value bars, okay? And then when it's an odd, it doesn't need them. See that? So if you look at my answers here, all the even ones, well, not all of them, but almost all of them, the ones that had variables, all had absolute value bars around them, didn't they? And then the odd kth roots didn't have any absolute values. See? Any absolute value bars, because they're not necessary. All right? Our next video is going to be 7.2a, and we're going to talk about how to multiply radical expressions. I'm going to add this video to the Algebra 2 playlist. There's links in this description to Algebra 1 from last year where we talked about odd and even roots and kth roots. And I'm going to put 7.1a and 7.1b, our two previous videos from this chapter, into this description so you can just click on them. Okay? This is a very tricky subject. So if you can watch the Algebra 1 videos, and the two videos before this one, you should understand this concept, okay? It shouldn't be that bad once you watch all the, the videos that go along with this, all right? Because I didn't explain it in just one. It was too difficult to explain in one video. I hope you're having a great day. It's a beautiful sunny day out here today. 
and I'll see you next video. Bye.